Before the Civil War, a Louisville company was formed to provide products for people who are blind. And that was before airplanes, before telephones, and before the Kentucky Derby. Because the American Printing House for the Blind was there, providing books and materials since 1858. The mission is to promote the, the education of the blind by providing the, the tools and materials needed for education in life. So we provide the materials they need to succeed in education in life. In 1842, Kentucky appropriated $10,000 for the establishment of a school for the blind to educate blind children in Kentucky in Louisville. And, uh, the principal from the Perkins School and, and three students appeared before the General Assembly and uh, the Kentucky School was founded in 1842. The first superintendent of that school, Huntoon, was, was mechanically uh, oriented and uh, he began and the school began developing some tactile materials that we requested and used around the country. Uh, General Assembly in 1858 said that's not why the school's there, the school's there to educate blind children. So they founded the American Printing House for the Blind in 1858 as a private, non-profit corporation to produce educational materials, not only for the state, but we could also produce for, for the entire country. And we did receive $5 per student in Kentucky to provide those educational materials. So that's the way we were founded, that's the way we were established as a private, non-profit in 1858. 153 years ago. When people come and visit our museum, I hope they walk away with the idea that this uh, condition that we, we fear so much, that sighted people fear so much, the, the most feared disability surveys regularly is blindness. And I just want them to learn that, you know, there's nothing in our world that you cannot figure out a way around. Um, if you have goals in your life, that they're all still achievable. It's just a matter of figuring out a way to make the world accessible to you again. Uh, we're going to use different senses, and uh, it's all possible. Well, the first part is, is all about reading and writing. So the first book um, that was ever embossed for people with visual impairments was in 1786, Paris, France. Um, raised letters is how books were made back then um, for people with visual impairment. Um, Similar to Braille, but you could actually read them with your eyes. Through reading and writing, we, we talk about Louis Braille, obviously, who, who invented Braille. Dozens of different designs for Braille writers. Um, and then kind of the museum explores all the different uh, topics that a kid has to learn. Uh, whether it's geography or math, science, all of these things had to be uh, kind of adapted so that they would be accessible to a kid who was learning not with their eyes, but with either their ears or with their hands. Of course, Helen Keller is the most well-known blind person uh, in, in the history of the world, beloved across, across the United States. Uh, she was widely read. Uh, one book that she had that actually was made here at the American Printing House for the Blind, which was uh, one volume in her Bible. You know, a lot of people think of the Bible as a big book, but when you turn it into Braille, it becomes an even bigger book. And so just the book of Psalms alone is what we have on display there. We began producing on hard records uh, in, say, 37 or 38, 1937 or 38, and, uh, and moved to vinyl records that you could in, include in your, uh, you know, in magazines that you send out. The reason that that went away was the, the uh, one producer, we came down to one producer of the style, the needle. And uh, when, when that went away, then we moved from records to analog cassettes. And we've been producing cassettes for years. We now are into the digital age. We provide digital uh, materials, and we, we now uh, send that material out on really thumb drives, but it's in a special case. All he had to do was pull out his world, and he was too down about it. I've been doing it, um, gosh, over probably around 30 years now started as a, 
pretty much a part-time thing while I was still at the radio station. I was at WHAS and I would do a shift and then come here and read and then gradually after I left there it developed into a more permanent type thing and uh, I enjoy it. I get great satisfaction from knowing where the end product is going and uh, then you get great satisfaction too you can get feedback from uh, visually impaired people who hear your voice on the street and say Jack Fox and you think where do I know this person from and they've read your books so that's kind of nice. We'll represent for all the outfits around here and our association that want us. Jack is the one that you hear when you're at the airport, no matter if you're in Minneapolis or Louisville, uh, you, you've come to the end of the walking sidewalk, please watch your feet, that's Jack Fox. But uh, Milton Metz, Barry Burnson, uh, an awful lot of, Mitzi Freelander has read probably close to 2,000 books. his glance to Owen. Not only to me. We'll get tours through here when uh, blind conventions are in town and people will stand outside and they're crying <laughs> and they're saying you know you, you bring the world alive to us I'm not the only narrator who hears that everybody does and that's that's just kind of humbling really but very rewarding I think the people who work here realize that they are making the world a more accessible place for all these people some of our people who work here stay for 45, 46 years. So it must be a place where they're getting personal satisfaction. It's not just a job. They could work at some other factory. But uh, the American Printing House for the Blind is special, and special to people across the country.